Om Shanti. Good afternoon. Namaskar. Delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me here. It's, you can really feel a wonderful sense of energy here. And this is my first visit to the campus. I'm sure it will not be the last. Uh, so delighted to be here amidst all of you. Uh, the next 15 minutes, I just want to share some of my reflections and learnings of having worked with youth and young people uh, and, and, and a lot of women leaders. Uh, you know, I was, uh, there was a terrific uh, talk by Shimita ji in terms of her experience and it's wonderful to uh, hear and learn from the inspiration stories that we see all around us and I want to share a couple of stories that have inspired me. In my previous uh, venture, I used to run a startup called MeritTrack, which started out as India's first skills assessment entity. And uh, I used to assess, we used to test people. So for all the IT BPO companies, we used to be the ones testing people. So all those horrible tests that we put you through, that was all done by us. And I say horrible because now I realize the futility of such tests. Uh, we used to run aptitude tests, behavioral tests, etc. Uh, and we have tested millions of people. So my worldview is some people are employable, some are not, and that's where the world is. You know, the people who have the skills will get ahead in life. The people who don't have the skills will fall behind. Uh, we had also published India's first ever employability uh, sc uh, score, uh, a report, which said only 25% of engineers and less than 15% of non-engineering -gra non graduates are employable. One day, I got a call from someone who said, we want to set up a rural BPO. You know, you understand what a BPO is. It's called Business Process Outsourcing Centers, largely in Bangalore those days. This was in 2007, 8 And uh, this gentleman called me to say, we want to do something in Raichur, which is North Karnataka. So I said, fine, uh, I can help. But uh, where will we find the talent? He said, that's why we're coming to you. Can you help find talent? I said, it's hard for graduates in Bangalore to to find graduates in Bangalore who will work for the BPO, imagine finding it in a place like Raichur, how will we ever find talent? So he said, hey, why don't we try something and take rural youth, village youth who never been to school, never held a pencil in their lives, is it possible to teach them English and computer skills and process orientation, etc.? And in a short span of time, is it possible to transform them to be BPO workers? I remember almost falling out of my chair laughing, saying that, hey, you can't do that with graduates in St. Joseph's College in Bangalore. What are you talking about, you know, finding youth in Raichur and, and, and converting them? But a small part of me said, why not? Right? Let's see what happens. So we went around the villages of North Karnataka. We must have visited some 50, 60 villages. Uh, several villages we were thrown out because we used to go in saying, uh, give me your most unemployed, unemployable youth, boys and girls. Uh, and, and we said preferably kids who have not, uh, youth who have not gotten to school, but they should be 18 years of age. Almost one village filed a police complaint on us saying these guys look like kidney harvesters. You know, they'll take a youth and, and take away the kidneys and send them back home. But finally we found about eight brave youth, I must say. And our criteria was that even if they have seen a train in their lives, they're not as backward or not come from such low exposure villages. So our criteria was, uh, you know, this initial lot must have not gone to any school, uh, must not know how to recognize any alphabet in any language, uh, and must come from extremely low exposure backgrounds. And we said, we'll see how we can transform them. Uh, I'll play the video of, of one of our uh, protagonists there, a guy called Ramesh. Uh, Ramesh comes from a village called Koti Gudda near Raichur, about 60 kilometers from Raichur. And Ramesh comes from a family which is of 10 people, siblings, brothers, sisters, parents. All of them live on a three acre land, unarable, and the entire family earns about 3,000 rupees a month. Right? That's the. And Ramesh had never been to school, never held a pencil in life, met all the criteria. We asked him, Have you seen a train? He said, What is it? Right? We said, okay, we have the right candidate. So if you can play Ramesh's uh, video, the audio is very patchy. So if you can increase the volume. My name is Stad Mary. So this is way back in 2007 or 8 in, in Koppal. Uh, 
राजकुमार रमेश मसलिंगा नमतंजयसुर गंगामाता ओके सो यू गेट द पिक्चर Ramesh is not even able to say a sentence properly in uh, Kannada. He is, for some of us who understand Kannada, all he is saying is my brother's name, sister's names, parents' name. It took us like two hours to get him in front of this video camera. He had, he was petrified, right? And at that time, we never realized that we'll be playing this video so many times. So that's why you'll see some grainy video. This was again 2007-8 when we didn't have smartphones. We had to have some really uh, bad video cameras to record. So there were eight boys, uh, six boys, two girls that we managed to convince. Got them to a house, not very far from here, and we hired a BPO trainer and said, "Teach them English." The BPO trainer vanishes during lunch time. We reach his home. He says, "Are you crazy? I mean, how do I teach them anything? Right? I don't even know where to begin." Uh, a few friends of mine uh, who came from the development world said, "Okay, we'll give it a try." and uh sunil rajesh my partner started living with these uh youth uh and and figuring out a curriculum on the fly and figuring out how do you learn from within right how do you really give them the self confidence to learn i used to travel extensively during those periods and 4 5 months later i came back uh into bangalore and i said what's happening and they said come meet these kids and uh this is the same ramesh i met uh, you know this is the video taken after 7 months and if you can play video number 2 i am ramesh from raichur when i was in my village i did not know how to write even my name in kannada in my village i always wore dhoti i never traveled on the bus i did not know what the time and what the watch i knew only two things go to farm or sunrise came back home or sunset i had never visited a city i did not know about city life when i first came to bangalore I could not speak to anyone, and I also scared to touch a computer. When I started to learn in English, I was so scared because I did not know how to write A B C D. After the seven months, I can type minimum at forty words per minute. A month ago, I went to my village for my brother's wedding. My mother told me, "Please, sir, come and have a seat." She did not recognize me. She asked, "Who are you?" I told her, "I am Ramesh, your son." I see the video. Then I showed my ID card on which earlier photo was there. She looked at the photo for a while and agreed. And after the every moment, she cried with the tears of happiness. I never can forget that experience. Thank you. Thank you. I. This uh, I still get goosebumps when I see this video. This two hours I spent with all eight of them changed my life. because i realize how wrong we are to tag people as unemployable unfit uneducated unproductive dr mohammad yunus the nobel laureate said it beautifully he says a lot of us die without knowing what treasures lie within so the what this proved to me and that's how was the genesis of the head held high foundation not just ramesh all eight had flowered like this massive confidence In fact, from the ninth month onwards, we got HDFC uh, insurance to start giving us an insurance claims processing, and we set up a processing center in Koppal, North Karnataka. And from the twelfth month, we were meeting the metrics that uh, they used to get out of the Mumbai center. So we were able to prove that in less than a year, a youth who had never ever seen an English alphabet is able to meet the process and the metrics of a global uh, insurance BPO. and we can we can be very productive in in less than one year head and life foundation today has touched about 25000 such youth uh, and transformed these youth across about 100 odd uh, districts of the country interestingly 70% of them are girls and we have them coming from the most rural uh, backgrounds uh, in fact i i use the word consciously transformation not training because training you learn something you forget you will come back but a ramesh after can ever ever become ramesh before again it's an irreversible process in fact four years later in 2011 uh, 2011 2012 we won the cnn ibm real heroes award and you can see ramesh four years later receiving this award if you play video 3 please ramesh good evening ladies and gentlemen four years ago i had never thought of getting out of my my village today 
Hi, I'm on national TV. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Four years ago, I didn't know how to write my name in any language. Today, I'm working in a BPO company as a team leader. My dream is to get a, give an opportunity to all the villagers like me. So, and there's an interesting story there. Ramesh then used to still work as a BPO team leader. He was earning 15,000 rupees a month, like five times his family income. Uh, in 2015, he said something, I'm not happy. I'm not doing anything for my village. So he quit his job, went back to his village, and just started going around schools and colleges sharing his story. Today, he's the most sought after speaker, motivational speaker in North Karnataka. He has touched over about six lakh uh, school children and college youth, sharing his story, telling them that if I can become like this, imagine what you guys can be, right? And that journey has continued. In fact, uh, the fourth video, I just want to uh, play a very short clip. We were invited to be featured in uh, Aaj Ki Raat Hai which was uh, hosted by Amitabh Bachchan. And uh, you'll see two of our other uh, trainees there, and I'll pick up a story from there. If you can just play. Rajesh Ji, Rajesh is my partner at the foundation. His name is Head Held High. And this Sansa has learned some students here. Mr. Meghraj Mantri out 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 here. Before joining Head Held High, I was a grazing buffalo in the village and working in a farm and not knowing anything. Even I don't know how to write my name in any language. I never tie a watch. I never know what is a watch and time. I only know two things, sunrise and sunset. Going in the morning, coming in the evening. It's a very good thing, Devi and Sajjano. It's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. And it's not the same as the Suri Uday and the Suri Ast. It's not the same as the Suri Ast. It's the same as the Suri Ast. It's the same as the Suri Ast. And it's the same as the Suri Ast. Rajesh Bhatji. So that gives you an idea. Interestingly, Meghraj and there was another lady sitting next to him called Chandana. So let me share with you Chandana's story. Uh, so she comes from a village called Chiknaik Nalli near Tumkur. She had finished her 10th standard, but her parents were, as usual, you know, telling her that, you know, we don't have money to send you to higher education. We want you to get married, you know, just get off our uh, books, so to speak, and go to your husband's uh, uh, life. We met her on one such trip, and, she, and you could see the determination in her eyes. She says, no, I want to come for this program. Uh, her father was petrified of sending her to uh, Bangalore, but somehow he happened to be very supportive. He said, okay, I will come to Bangalore, stay with you for three weeks. If I feel things are okay, then I will let you continue. Otherwise, I'm taking you back. He came, stayed for a few weeks got comfortable and convinced that she was in a good program. Uh, Chandana completed her uh, program, uh, seven months. She worked in the BPO. She then said, I want to set up my own BPO. So she took a loan of a few computers from us, started doing her own BPO. She hired some five, six people, started doing some work. But six months, somebody refused to pay her dues, and she went bankrupt. She came back again. Uh, she started working with us as a trainer. Today, Chandana has trained over about 800 uh, rural youth like her from Tumkur, Davangere, Chitradurga district. And she's become one of our most successful center managers. Uh, she's also put her mother and told her that, why are you sitting at home? You make some lovely papads. I will become an entrepreneur and sell your papads. And, in, and interestingly, her first customer was Taj Hotels, where she sold the papads to Taj. Right? And last year, she, a few years ago, she got married and she convinced her husband saying, why are we just doing only commercial stuff? So she's actually opened a NGO which looks after homeless children in uh, Electronic City and provides them a home and education. You know, the thing I, two things that, that walked me about her was I had a friend of mine who had come from US. Uh, he was the CEO of a large company. This was several years ago. And uh, this guy in his usual US accent was talking about how he's the CEO of a large company and, and he was asking Chandana, so what do you want to be? So she looked at him and said, I want to be a CEO. Uh, 
so he asked her, I think he made the mistake of asking her, which company do you want to be the CEO of? She looked at him straight into his eyes and said, why not your company? This guy was shocked. He says, this is the first time ever that somebody is asking me for my job with so much of confidence. Right? Interestingly, both Megaraj and Chandana, we were invited to the IAS Training Academy in Mussoorie early this year. And uh, 650 IAS officers listened to their story for a day. They role-played Chandana and Megaraj's journey. And at the end of the day, there was a standing ovation and they were calling her sir, I mean her madam and sir. And that to them was a highlight to say, listen, if we can get to the most prestigious academy in the country and be referred as sirs and madams by the IS officers, I think we have really achieved uh, something. And I truly believe that each of us and each of you have un unlimited potential. I've seen this over and over again, that if you believe in yourself, that's the only thing that you need to do. I know how many of you watched the movie Kung Fu Panda. Have you? Okay, some of you who have, some of you have watched, watch it again. Those of you who have not watched it, try and figure out how you can watch that movie. It used to be my favorite movie. It used to be, it continues to be. There are five mantras that will come out from that movie and anywhere else. And especially to what uh, Shubhataji was saying, we all know the challenges that our country faces, right? Especially around women, we know the labor force participation is low. We know that, uh, in fact, today there was a very disturbing report that we are ranked so low in the gender parity and gender equality index across the country. I think we ranked some 135th in the world. Uh, things are improving, but I believe that things won't improve till each of us believe in our own potential, right? Uh, and the Kung Fu Panda movie is all about that. It's about a panda who accidentally gets anointed as the dragon warrior. And he refuses to believe that I'm the dragon warrior. But a series of incidents and experiences, once he believes that I'm the dragon warrior, nothing can stop that warrior. And I think that's so true enough each of our lives. You look at Ramesh, you look at Chandana, you look at Megraj, you look at thousands of other youth. I think that is the change. So the mantras that I want to leave you with are the following one start to dream big there is no aspiration no dream that is small uh, and no dream that is big imagine the wildest biggest thing that you wish for and wish it with all your heart it will come true second it's just not enough to dream i think dr kalam abdul kalam ji said it beautifully he says the dream is not something that you do when you're asleep a dream is something that will not not let you sleep at night Right? So have such a dream that does not allow you to sit quietly, does not allow you to sit, uh, you know, you're restless, you want to make it happen. Right? That was the look I saw in Chandana when we had gone to bring her on board to the program. Secondly, believe in yourself. And only you can do that. Right? Everything starts with self-belief. You are what you believe. Right? Third is that think, and I would, I would underline here, think entrepreneurially. The future belongs to entrepreneurs. I want to see a world where all of us who are educated, who have the privilege of being in institutions like this, go on to create jobs for 1,000 other women. Right? Because we have so much of manpower that is there and youth entering the workforce the next 10 years, how do we create jobs for all of them? I look at each one of you to think entrepreneurially, to figure out how can you set up enterprises that can employ 100, 1,000, 10,000 people. Fourth, Love all, serve all is such a beautiful mantra. And I think you said passion and compassion. If you start caring for the people around you, the problems that people have becomes an opportunity for setting up an enterprise, right? That's what she saw, that there were problems but converted to an opportunity, right? So how do you operate with care and compassion? And lastly, how do you uh, embrace change? The future is changing at a very fast pace. Embrace technology, embrace change, don't be afraid. Dream big and go on, make magic happen. I can assure you that there is tremendous magic in each one of us. If we can unleash, imagine the impact that we can do on the world around us. And I leave you with that wish that let us all thrive. Let us take our country and the world forward. And let's build a world which is full of abundant and abundance and happiness. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mr. Madan. That was very, very inspiring, those stories.